very rarely in history it happens that two giants meet and their meetings uh, get uh, recorded uh, so one of these uh, events is the meeting between uh, Ibn Khaldun and Taimur Lang um, Taimur Lang um, is known to English world as Tamerlan um, and um, Ibn Khaldun is I think is very popular very familiar uh, especially because of his uh, work so uh, he's known as uh, let's say a father of the history a modern history I would say because um, he's not uh, we can we can claim it he's him as a modern uh, the father of history because people were writing history before him long long before him but um, the modern kind of the history the way um, instead of uh, before him uh, it was fashionable uh, to when you're writing about the history uh, it was mostly um, about the kings and their uh, conquests um, about the cities and uh, uh, mostly about the famous people um, but um, Ibn Khaldun was the first scholar uh, who recognized the importance of the process so he developed a methodology so it's not um, so so the methodology um, just like about the science uh, so um, in science we do uh, science is basically a process a methodology of producing a knowledge um, so it uh, science is not just a single idea um, it's it's the ideas that um, produce through this process through these methods so the same goes about the modern history and about the modern sociology um, so it's uh, people are more not more uh, not interested in the kings and uh, queens and princes and famous people but the processes through which uh, civilizations um, evolve civilizations die um, so those are the processes so Ibn Khaldun um, was the father of the modern history and modern sociology um, in the sense um, so you see the his picture uh, because he um, did not mostly write about the kings and queens and princes as was fashionable at the time um, but he introduced a concept um, uh, in the concept his main concept was asabiya uh, so let me uh, pull um, a wikipedia article on this so the asabiya is an arabic word um, so in, um, um, in english we can call it like a social solidarity solidarity or a group group consciousness group feeling um, something that a groups um, uh, so some things that people recognize themselves with the group um, so he said like uh, and then he he described this uh, concept in terms of the cycle and that's very important so um, so you see you see he he, 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 he talks about this cycle now he says like uh, Ibn argues that uh, Asabiya is cyclical and directly related to rise and fall of civilizations it's the strongest at the start of, of a civilization declines as a civilization advances, and then another more compelling Asabiya eventually takes its place to help establish uh, different civilization basically it's as we have the same concept in in evolutionary biology um, that a new species uh, evolve on the periphery um, of, of, of a dominant species and then um, and the speciation basically is, is, is start on the periphery uh, of one of the processes of evolutionary processes and like a speci speciation so the same concept um, is about the asabia so um, either we agree uh, with his observation or doesn't agree that that doesn't matter uh, what uh, what's important is the process the methodology I hope that I could uh, I could have conveyed uh, the main concept and why he is recognized for his work um, and why we call him like a giant in history so um, we go back uh, to our main topic so why Timur uh, why we call Timur a giant in in the history um, so Timur uh, let me talk about his name first uh, because his name is very important um, so Timur um, if you recognize the name of Chinggis Khan, if you are, if you know about the Chinggis Khan, his name, actual name was Temujin, uh, Temuchin, some call Temujin, some call Temuchin. Um, so basically, Temu is very uh, important here. So Temu is is common in Temur's name and also in Temujin. Um, what Temu? Temu is a Mongolian word uh, for the iron. 
for the iron. So Temuchin uh, or Chinggis Khan, uh, father was an iron smith. So uh, that's why uh, he, he got his name from there. And Temur um, uh, wanted to be like a Chinggis Khan because he because he wanted to uh, people recognize him as um, let's say a descendant of uh, a Chinggis Khan and he wanted to get uh, legitimacy um, uh, based on this lineage his affiliation um, with the with the Chinggis Khan so his name Temur Temurit uh, Temur basically uh, means iron here and he wanted to fashion himself in the image of the uh, Chinggis Khan and he wanted to con to become a, a conqueror a great conqueror uh, like Chinggis Khan so but the problem uh, with the Taimur was at this time most of the Mongols were converted to uh, Islam um, so um, the, the the Mongol uh, let's say empire was uh, cr crumbling and they were dividing and uh, new new empires were um, taking roots in different parts of the what was once uh, Mongol uh, Empire. So basically, Temur uh, rose to power um, um, between these two, uh, the area that's now uh, modern Uzbekistan, so uh, Bukhara, around Bukhara, and um, Tashkan, Samarkand, Bukhara. Tashkan is basically Tajikistan. So uh, what's modern day Uzbekistan and Tajikistan? Um, this between these two area, uh, this um, this this valley is very popular, very fertile land. Uh, and so um, it was like one of the most populous area, let, let's say most civilized area in the Central Asia uh, in the Middle uh, Ages. <coughs> so what we call the Fergana Valley. So he was born and rose to power here, and then he expanded. Uh, he expanded down into the Persia and then he conquered let's say uh, went into Tur um, th th Turkey and and then also went into no what's what's modern Pakistan uh, what's modern Afghanistan basically Kabul Kandahar Herat and also into modern Pakistan uh, Lahore is here and then even into the India what we call it like uh, Delhi 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 or Delhi uh, is uh, part of northwest of India. Uh, at that time, the the Mughal the Mughal Empire was there, like Delhi Sultanate, what they called. So he conquered Delhi too, um, and then he turned into went into uh, even Syria. So you know uh, he conquered uh, modern day Iraq, and what's called Baghdad, and also uh, went into Syria and conquered um, Aleppo and uh, Damascus. So. You see, um, he was he couldn't like uh, conquer um, all the area that was once um, um, a Mongol Empire because the Chagatai Khanate was still there, uh, the Khanate of Golden Horde were there. Though he he did uh, his fight against the both Sultanate of Delhi, uh, Chagatai Khanate, and also the Golden Horde, uh, but he couldn't conquer all of them uh, because he. He died while he was trying to go into China and conquer China. Um, his life did not allow him, though he lived very long life. Um, I, I guess he, he lived around 70 years old, 70 years. So um, he, he lived a very long life. But despite his long life um, and ha all his life trying to conquer all this land, um, so he could not conquer uh, basically uh, China and Chagatai Khanate and also um, uh, Golden Horde, um, that's the modern Russia. Uh, but still, he did uh, a very good job. Uh, so, um, he in that terms of his expense of his empire, um, we can claim that um, he was um, he was um, he was a, a giant. So, why why Temur? Why I'm bringing um, mm, this Temur thing? Why? What's the important? point is here. The important point about Temur um, is um, you should know that the world at this time, um, um, the kind of a legitimacy that um, a conqueror, a king, let's say, um, would get uh, would want one was from the Islam because Islam was widespread in these areas, um, especially um, in Arabia and North Africa. 
um, so um, and also um, in in Delhi, most of these areas, uh, the the kind of legitimacy that would get uh, would be in Islamic legitimacy. So the Islamic legitimacy, you had to be um, had a lineage to the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, so you had to establish your descendancy into to the Prophet Muhammad. So the people would uh, call you legitimate, and you would follow you. But there was a, a Mongol was still an, a, a big empire. Another source of legitimacy was that you belong to uh, Chinggis Khan. You were descendant of Chinggis Khan. So Taimur was, um, let's say, torn between these two world, these two kind of a legitimacy, kind of legitimacy. So that's that's what important um, um, ab about the discussion between Ibn Khaldun and Taimur because. Uh, from their discussion, from their the topic that they discussed, uh, we learned about this part of uh, the, this this world, and and we learned what was on the mind of Ibn Khaldun, uh, what was he curious about, what why wh what was his interest, um, and then we also learned about the mind of uh, Taimur, what was he thinking about this kind of world, what was his worldview. So uh, it was a very uh, the report is very limited about their discussion, but it's a very, very important um, kind of discussion. So I had to give you a background a bit about Taimur and also a bit about Ibn Khaldun uh, in order to, uh, let's say, how this, um, why this, um, let's say, talk or discussion or interview between these two uh, giants were so important. So Taimur got his legitimacy uh, from the uh, from the Mongol side he tried to marry into the um, uh, princess into the woman uh, who belong who, who had uh, direct lineages uh, to Chinggis Khan uh, he ch he's, he put his name uh, Taimur he obeyed a kind of a law that's called Yasa law so uh, Yasa uh, is a Mongolian um, uh, is a is a Mongolian word is a Mongolian law, uh, so it's it's not recorded firsthand. Uh, it's it's people has compiled. Um, I I pulled Wikipedia page because um, Wikipedia has compiled a list of the laws. Uh, that's a basically um, that's a twenty uh, thirty two articles or more. Um, this is this is not uh, the kind of a law that was directly recorded because uh, Mongols was very secretive people. They did not want people um, that they, their laws were orally stated, uh, but they did. Uh, the, the recording was just for the royal family or just for the Mongols. Uh, they did not want it, um, everybody uh, knows the recording and everything else. Uh, so these laws came down and recorded from the secondary sources, from the Persian, Korean, and other sources. Uh, so, so we 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 don't know um, exactly if these were the exact law, the exact number of laws, or people added or subtracted or omitted uh, some of these uh, laws. Or, or these are just a few selected laws. Uh, but it's still, you know, what's important is this. Um, the, the Mongols had a yasa, as a yasa law. So when they conquered the Islamic world, um, they um, allowed people to worship whatever God they believe, what kind of a religion uh, they wanted to follow. They they were free. They were allowed to do the so uh, based on their yasa law. Um, oh, but they had to submit to the yasa law. Um, if you if you were living in this, this time of period mm, and you followed the Yasa law, you accepted the Yasa law, then you were free uh, to worship your God, to follow your own religion, to follow your own culture and customs and traditions. But you had to submit to those laws. So, in in the, in in that in that terms, the Mongols was very um, uh, as, as 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 a modern people because they were uh, a nation of laws. And um, but they wanted also allow people to do free trade and also. But and another thing is they did not tax uh, people who were scholar, who were um, religious scholar, who were scientists, um, or who were artisans, uh, people who were doing 
a cultural kind of stuff or religious kind of stuff or scientific kind of stuff they were not text they were exempted from text and they were not killed either so whenever they conquered any part of the world uh, let's say this was their world uh, this was the center of the world at that time um, most of the action happened in this part of the world at the at that time so um, they they wanted the artisans they wanted the scholars uh, because they 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 built they they want they needed them to run their empires so basically uh, we um, I think this is important to uh, recognize that Taimur though he was a Muslim uh, though he adopted Islam though he were he were raised as a, as a Muslim but in his families there were people who belong in, in Mongol people there were people believed in different kind of religion and people who were in their court people who were in their army um, they practiced different kind of religions believed different kind of religions they belonged to different kind of tri tribes they spoke different kind of uh, uh, languages so this is important to recognize and for that reason because a large part of his empire were in the Muslim world like Iran Afghanistan and modern Pakistan Iraq and Syria uh, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, uh, Tajikistan. Uh, so um, he wanted also to get a legitimacy uh, from the from the Islamic too. So that's the reason he called himself Sahib Quran. Um, that's uh, Sahib Quran is like um, giving. Um, let's say um, he was he ha he when he, when he was born. Uh, two uh, uh, two planets meet met with each other. So people on those times, like uh, they believed in astrology. So let's say it, it was a, it was it was a good fortune. It was a foretold that he was going to become uh, a, a great person. So that's why he he called himself uh, Sahib Khan. Um, and um, another thing, he was called himself Saif al Islam. Saif means uh, sword. Um, Islam is Islam, so he called himself Sword of Islam, and um, he did like uh, force some people to convert to Islam, despite his um, uh, let's say uh, tolerance for uh, loss of religion. But when people uh, forced him, like uh, people, not force is not a good word. Like people influenced him, like when say when religious scholar influenced him about a particular people, he did he did. Um, take action against them let's say uh, in in, Ma in in north uh, in north iran uh, under the caspian sea uh, what we call like a mazindaran like um, so the ismaili shia like uh, they were muslims but but they practiced like a a, a sect of islam um, that's called ismaili that's uh, still very um, they have like a very lots of people in in modern turkey uh, in, in in syria um, uh, still uh, uh, some large population in North Pakistan and also uh, in um, in Afghanistan um, so um, the Ismaili he did take action against the Ismailis um, here uh, in, in in the Mazindaran so um, so he wanted uh, to get um, legitimacy from those two worlds so he used all those things now did we know about the Ibn Khaldun? Um, he was interested in the history, uh, but not just in the kings um, and princes and queens and all those kind of uh, people, but in the process. And now that we know about the Taimur, uh, that he wanted to become um, a, a second Chinggis Khan, but uh, his legitimacy, he was not a pure Mongolian, like, let's say he was not a direct descendant of Chinggis Khan, so basically he wanted um, to get recognition so he did marriages and he put his names and practiced the Yasa law so I'm repeating all these things because it's important to bring all those summary um, kind of a things um, um, but he the area that he conquered was a uh, Muslim world and so he wanted to get a legitimacy uh, from Islamic world too so uh, you know these two people meet what they talk about so that's very very important topic so let me pull uh, this translation um, 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 so basically um, it's let's say uh, 
um, an autobiography of uh, Ibn Khaldun himself, like what he talks. So basically, Ibn Khaldun comes to the Syria. So let me pull this. He talks about a bit about the process. So let's say. Let me let me read it uh, because he gives like uh, some some um, some perspective like why he came to 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 Damascus. So uh, because he was not from Damascus, uh, Ibn Khaldun for, uh, was from Maghrib. Maghrib is uh, what we what w Maghrib in Arabic uh, called the areas that uh, what we know uh, is uh, Tunis, um, Morocco, and Alge Al 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 Algeria. So this this three country in, in Arabic uh, called uh, Maghrib. So he was from Maghrib. Um, then he went into into Egypt. Um, there was uh, at the time Mamluks were uh, ruling the um, the Egypt, and then he came to Syria. So um, so basically um, he he came to Syria. Uh, he, he was in Damascus uh, then uh, at the time when the Tamerlane uh, uh, put a siege. Uh, around Damascus, he wanted to conquer the Damascus. So people um, gathered in into Damascus Mosque. Uh, they were discussing uh, whether because uh, Tamer Tamerlane or Taimurlang uh, promised these people uh, that he would um, not plunder the city, and uh, so um, everybody would be safe um, if they opened the gates uh, to Damascus. Uh, open the gate of Damascus. So people were in the great mosque of Damascus and they were debating uh, whether they um, believe in, in, in Tamerlan's and Tamerlan's promises. Um, and but uh, so while they were discussing, um, he decides, Ibn Khaldun decides that he is going to meet them. Uh, uh, so he was raised, uh, he was he was like um, and put in a basket and 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 uh, he was like uh, let's say um, he, he he get out of Damascus by uh, by means of a basket and a rope from the wall um, instead of going out from uh, from the from the door so from the gates because the gates were closed and the people were still discussing whether they are going to surrender um, uh, to Tamerlan or not so Ibn Khaldun uh, was greeted uh, by the uh, let's say uh, Tamerlan. Uh, so it's it's important as uh, as we said that uh, Tamerlan uh, was like uh, not uh, uh, was was a Mongol. Uh, people talk bad things about Mongols. Yes, they were like had very harsh laws like Yasala, and their laws were um, told to punish people who were disobeyed them or who uh, get to fight against resisted. Let's say. Uh, a Mongol resisted Mongols, or they broke the law of Mongols, or they did not accept their laws. They were harshly punished. Yes, but um, they were actually uh, not, let's say, savage people. They were not bloodthirsty people. They were punishing people for breaking laws, not, uh, not let's say, uh, killing people for sake of killing or for enjoying the people, uh, for enjoying the the killing. So now here, what they discuss is basically two things. Uh, uh, the first thing is about the asabia, the concept of asabia that we um, already um, talked about. Um, another thing is about the what I say. Let let me pull, let me bring uh, the main discussion uh, discussion here. So so he it it becomes important uh, yes so the fir the the first thing when they meet with each other so the first thing is he call him like um, the the Timurlan asks him uh, where do you come from so he, he calls that I came from the Maghrib and he t uh, question him about the Maghrib and uh, because he was not uh, yet into Maghrib, so he called he 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 was like curious about the Maghrib, their geography, the people, and he asked Ibn Khaldun to write um, about the um, Maghrib. So 
from this what we learned is that um, Temur was very interested uh, learning about the geography because he was making his mind to conquer those areas. So that's, that's, that's the reason they were, um, they were giving the scholars so much importance uh, and also protection because uh, they knew what the scholars could do. So Ibn Khaldun, um, so he asked about the Ibn Khaldun uh, to write about the Maghrib uh, in very detail and Ibn Khaldun agrees. So now we know what was in on the mind of the um, what was on the mind of uh, um, Taimur Lang. Now their their next discussion is about um, Asabia. Uh, so uh, about the Asabia, uh, they discuss about the kings. So um, the Ibn Khaldun tells um, Taimur Lang that the people. Uh, that, that, that there was two great people one is Arab the most populous people one is Arab and uh, the reason is people are the Arab people are so popular is because of their Asabiya because of their uh, group recognition and that group recognition was given by Islam and um, there the next people is the Turkic people and so um, the, because the Turkic people did not have a concept as is let's say Asabiya uh, like Islam, so he gives a very um, uh, interesting uh, answer, and and he says like uh, because the Turkic people were always in, in um, let's say, and uh, uh, always they were um, fighting with the Persians um, uh, because of this rivalry with the Persian because of their long uh, rivalry. So they established they they could establish a kind of a a sabia, a group, a kind of a group recognition, and 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 they were more, they were more. Uh, let's say th he said that the Turkic people are more strong. Uh, is, uh, uh, let's say built a very strong kind of a, a sabia. That that was more stronger than people than the Persian because Persian had Khosrow, that's equivalent to Caesar. So, but they 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 were they were conquered uh, by the Turkic people. And they did not last. Um, so the Islam conquered Persia. The the Asabia of Islam was more overpowered. Let's say uh, Iranian or Persian Asabia. And the same goes with the Turkic. So the Turkic people overcame them. Uh, so he says Caesar. There was Caesar. There was Alexander. Um, and they were uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar. So they n none of these uh, could last because they could not develop. Uh, a kind of a uh, uh, strong asabia. So it's 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 uh, Ibn Khaldun's um, let's say observation at the time, and then they started discussing. Um, so uh, Tamerlan um, discussed about the Nebuchadnezzar because he did not agree that Nebuchadnezzar was a king. Uh, so he said Nebuchadnezzar was just a general, um, just like me. Um, and, uh, so. And <laughs> Tamerlan basically uh, called himself because he 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 wanted to become uh, he as I said he had a legitimacy problem so he uh, put his stepson who was um, from his uh, Mongol uh, wife as a king and he called himself as a general as a conqueror uh, that serving um, this uh, let's say king um, so that was that that's that's very interesting. I think I'm closing this talk here um, because um, it's getting too long. I think I made my point here uh, about um, about the, the meeting between Ibn Khaldun and, and Timurlan, um their importance. Um, I think I talked about why Timurlan was uh, a giant in history, uh, what was in, in, in his mind when he um, talked with Ibn Khaldun what was the question so this was two uh, basic questions he, he was curious about new lands about geography about the people and Ibn Khaldun was interested about the Asabia so they discussed about it though so Ibn Khaldun uh, mentioned the name of kings but he did not give them importance he gave them the people importance so he mentioned instead of giving importance to the kings 
uh, let's say Alexander Khosro Nebuchadnezzar uh, so he gave importance to the Arab people uh, to the Turkic people and he explained um, what was the source of let's say a Sabiya or a group uh, let's say uh, solidarity a point uh, in Arab world and how they overcame overpowered let's say Persian and what was in Tur Turkic people because Turkic people did not have a um, uh, a single religion um, though um, the Islamic uh, though the Islam let's say um, become a part of their Asabiya the Turkic people uh, still maintain their own Asabiya and then they use this Asabiya uh, to not only conquer Persia but they also conquered Arab world um, so and why was the how this Asabiya was developed so Ibn Khaldun reasoning was that the Turkic people had a very long rivalry uh, with the Persian so it's it's very important concept the religion on one part and rivalry uh, another part uh, do we agree with these two points let's say if you have a comment on this topic um, I would really like to hear it um, let's say I I would make my argument or tell my point in another video probably because this video is getting lengthy I hope this video was enjoyable and you learned something from this video thank you